Hi everyone, it's awesome to see you. Thanks for joining me here again on my channel. Now today I'm back up at the allotment and it is really, really windy again. Um, I am on holiday this week, so I was looking forward to coming up and spending loads of time up here in the sunshine. However, that has not happened. Um, it's been really windy and really, really cold, but I am determined to get my potatoes in. So I've got my first earlies here. I'm also gonna be doing my nettle fertilizer today as I promised. So stay tuned and let's get down to it. Welcome back everyone. I hope you're all safe and I hope you're all well. I wonder what the weather has been like where you are this week as I plan to put out my potatoes on Easter weekend. However, the weather was just shocking. We had snow, we had hail, we had rain and it was really, really cold. So instead of forcing myself to come up here, I enjoyed some time at home in the garden and I've decided that today is the day that I'm gonna get my potatoes put in instead. Now it is quite windy outside, so what I'm gonna do is film me obviously putting the potatoes in and digging my trenches, um, but I'm gonna do a voiceover with it because the wind is just so strong, you aren't gonna hear me and I want it to be the best it can. So that's how I'm going to be filming today, just so you don't have to hear the, the blusteriness of what is going on outside. It is in fits and starts, so I might get the opportunity just to have a chat with you as I go along, but we will see. So today I'm gonna to be planting out my first earlies. As I said before, these are my Charlotte potatoes. Um, I have got other varieties at home for the main crop, but they won't be going in for a few more weeks yet. So there's no rush, don't panic, take your time and just get the potatoes in as and when you can. So today I'm gonna to be doing that and I've also got my um, nettle fertilizer, which I said I was gonna do and I am gonna do, I am gonna get that done today. I've got my um, milk bottles at the ready as well, which have obviously all been cleaned and washed and I'm gonna be putting my nettle fertilizer in. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not looking forward to it one bit, um, <laughs> but I will get it done today, I promise. So first of all, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna show you the area where I'm gonna be putting my first earlies and I need to sort of turn the area over. It has been done already, but I'm just gonna give it one more go. I'm then gonna start digging my trenches. What you'll also see me doing in the footage is when I'm spacing out my trenches, I will be filling them with chicken manure pellets. Um, it's just something we do for pretty much all of our crops just to give them the best possible start. So that's how I'll be doing it. So we will be putting the potatoes in now and doing the nettle fertilizer in a little while. So this is the area that the Charlotte potatoes are going in. As you can see, it's been turned over once. It is only half of this full size bed that you can see. Um, I am gonna give it just a last turnover, get rid of the last of the weeds before I start digging the trenches. So I better get cracking with that now. Okay, so first of all, I am just gonna give the area a bit of a weed. Like I said, and as you can probably see, the ground has been turned over at least once before, but I am having real issues with couch grass. And even though I've turned it over now two or three times, I'm still getting bits of it appear. So I think that's gonna be a bit of a long-term problem for me here at the plot. So anyone has any tips on how to combat this problem, apart from keep digging it up every time I see it, please let me know. So once I've done the weeding, I am using my cultivator here just to give it one more last turnover. And again, that will just pull up any of the loose weeds and it will also break down the bigger clumps of soil because even when you use a spade or a fork, you can be left with sort of quite large clumps. So I use my cultivator to make sure that I break those down too. As you can see, I am still pulling up couch grass and weeds with pretty much every turn of it. I have gone about two fork depths um, 
with my fork to try and get out as much couch grass as I can, but I think it's going to be an ongoing battle. So as you can see now, I'm nearly done this area. The cultivator is really, really handy. Um, saves your back as well. Um, you know, bending down and digging forkfuls all the time. And just, you know, once you've got the ground nice and loose, having a cultivator really does save your back and just makes your life a little bit easier. More couch grass again. It's endless. Right, so another thing that I do here, and I know that not everybody does it, but I am a stickler for things being in really straight lines. So here I am measuring the distance between each of my rows of potatoes. And all I do is put in a cane on either side of the row, as you'll be able to see me now going to do the other side. Goodness me, look at those weeds. I need to sort those out. But basically, it just makes sure I get the adequate distance between each row of potatoes so that I can bank them up as easily as possible. Uh, last year, I did make a bit of a boo-boo and with my main crops, I had a few rows that I just hadn't left quite enough space. So banking up was actually really, really tough. So this year, I'm taking no chances. Uh, the gaps between them all are the same. And then what I do is I use those canes that are in the ground to judge where to dig my trenches for my potatoes to go. I just like things to be really orderly and straightforward. Okay, so this is the first of my trenches. Now for the Charlotte potatoes, I am doing five rows. I will only show you two and one of them will be in high speed because, you know, you don't want to sit and watch me digging all the time. But basically, my aim is to have each trench probably the depth of the spade. So between sort of six, six and eight inches. Oh, there's more couch grass. I could see it then. Um, <laughs> it's a nightmare. Um, so yeah, what I'm doing here is digging my trench so I can put in my potatoes. And yeah, like I say, I aim for it to be between six and eight inches deep. And then I don't tend to do it too wide. I know a lot of people now don't dig trenches. What they tend to do is they just use a bull planter or a trowel and just dig a hole where their potatoes are going to go, which I tried last year and it did work. However, I was just in a trench mood so I just thought I'll do it the long way this time so that's what I did and continued digging my trenches the old-fashioned way as you can see I've nearly got down to one end the rows I'm doing this year are shorter than the rows that I did last year so they aren't taking me as long which is quite nice however that obviously means that I'm going to have more rows to do um, because they're shorter However, it does give me a bit of a break when I need to have one rather than spending a long, long time doing one massive row and thinking, oh my goodness, I haven't got anywhere. I've only done one row, whereas I've managed to get a few done in a quite a quick space of time. But yeah, I think I'm pretty much at the end of this now. Just get a few of the loose bits of soil out of the bottom of the trench. Okay, so I told you this bit was coming. These are chicken manure pellets. We use them every year for pretty much all of our crops. And all I do when it comes to potatoes is sprinkle them in the bottom of the trench. And yeah, that is, that is pretty much it, just to give the potatoes the best start. Um, when they're watered, obviously they'll break down and they'll provide the potatoes adequate nutrients. With all of the other... Um, crops that I plant I tend to put it on the top of the soil about a month before I'm going to start planting up and then that gives it time to break down on the surface of the soil and seep down especially if you're doing seeds because they won't be eight inches deep. Okay so last but not least I am now putting the potatoes in. So what you need to do when you put your potatoes in if you've chitted them always make sure the eye is pointing upwards towards the sun and that's the way that you place your potatoes. 
Now with my Charlotte potatoes, I'm doing them between 12 and 15 inches apart. Uh, here I've sort of, I'm going along the row and deciding whereabouts to put them and then I sort of change them when I get to the end. So now I am just doing another row, which obviously you can see is in high speed because I don't want you guys to get bored whilst you're watching me dig another row. So like I said, again, spade deep with regards to um, the depth of the trench. I always aim for it to be about six inches across as well. And then, yeah, just make sure it's deep enough. We still have got frosts in the UK. If you have already planted your potatoes, just be wary of when they poke through. As we lost loads last year to the frost, which was absolutely devastating. They did survive, fortunately. Um, but yeah, always, always be careful. You don't want your hard work to go to waste. But yeah, here we go. I am getting there now. So all I'll do now is rake it over and then that's another row done. And that's what the trench looks like, just to give you guys an idea. So that is the potatoes done. Like I said, it was really windy earlier, so I have had to do a bit of a voiceover for that part, but hopefully you'll be able to hear me a little bit better. So now, as promised, I am going to be doing that nettle fertiliser. I've got everything down here in front of me, so I've got the infamous bucket of nettle fertiliser. I've also got my sieve, another bucket which I'm going to decant it into initially. And then I've got my washed out milk bottles and a funnel. So what I'm going to do first of all is pour the fertiliser into the other bucket. Um, hopefully the smell isn't going to be too bad. And then once it's in the bucket, I'll use the funnel to decant it into the bottles. But fingers crossed, this isn't too bad. Here we go. Oh, I can smell it already. That smells... Hideous. Okay. Just give me a second, I'm going to try and pour this into here. So there we are, and I'm going to be honest with you, it smelled absolutely disgusting. Um, way worse than I thought it would actually, but it has been sat there for seven months, so it's been festering well. Um, I'm going to store these in the polytunnel because I don't want the shed to absolutely smell, and I think it would take a while for this smell to disappear. What I've done with the rest is put it back in the original bucket, and then what I'll do is once I've got enough bottles, I will come back and do it again and fill them with the remainder of the fertiliser but if you, you know for something that's free for something that takes absolutely minimal effort give it a go and your plants will thank you for it in the coming year well that's it from me this week guys i hope you didn't laugh at me too much though i can't say i blame you if you did if you enjoyed this video please consider giving me a like and you can subscribe for further content on my channel but for now have a good week stay safe and i'll see you all soon bye